Quilters Attic Sewing Center and Sewing with Sandy. Today, I wanted to tell you a little about the Baby Lock Allegro. It's a great new machine, and you're gonna really wanna see what it has to offer. Before I show you the machine, let me just tell you a little about it. I'm looking at it now. It has a 12 inch opening. Fantastic for a little bit of free motion quilting, those that wanna give free motion quilting a try. It has speed control, it has scissors, it has needle up and down, it has reverse, it has tie off. In addition to all those things, it has 200 different stitches as well as an alphabet. So this machine really is a great machine. So let's get started. Let me show you the machine. As you can see, when I hold this ruler up to the machine, this machine has from inside here all the way over to the needle, it has 12 inches of space. That's an awful lot of room to wrap up a quilt and do some free motion or straight line quilting. The machine comes with your standard sewing feet as well as a free motion foot. It also takes the standard baby lock walking foot. So it's got some really, really nice features and accessories that can work with it. As you can see, it has the start stop button, reverse tie off needle up and down and scissors. Awesome features, I love them all. It also has a speed control. While this machine is not a touch screen, it is very easy to navigate through the stitches. When I turn it on, it goes directly to a straight stitch and then I can just touch and go to stitch four and it shows me a picture of a zigzag. I know the screen's a little hard to see, but from where I'm sitting, it's super easy. I can see it very nicely. I've made a zigzag stitch on my screen. I can just hit the plus to make my stitch width wider or narrower. I can hit the plus or the minus over here to make my stitch longer or shorter. Very nice features. If you can see in the top left, the screen is flashing with a little icon. That is your presser foot up and down icon. As soon as I lower my foot to get started sewing, that icon goes away and stops flashing at me. It's just a little warning light. Before we do a few stitches, let me show you how easy it is to wind a bobbin and thread. One thing I really love about the Baby Lock machines, the threading, the bobbin winding, everything is pictured on the machine somewhere. So if I open up the stitch lid, you're going to see inside here, it has all the pictures of winding a bobbin and the different steps to do that. So I'm just going to follow along, pull my thread off the spool, come around here, and then come back over in here, in here, and right over to the bobbin. Couldn't be easier. The only thing that can be a little tricky is coming behind this disc here, this pretension unit, and then in right there. That's the hardest part, and it isn't very hard. You may have seen my thread slide off, so I'm going to put a spool cap here. I typically would use a smaller one, but that's the first one I grabbed, so we'll just use that for today. I'm going to just trim a nice end on my thread using a baby lock bobbin. I'm gonna go from the inside of the bobbin slide it right up into the hole, and then put the bobbin on the bobbin spindle. Now that I'm ready to wind the bobbin, the last step is to push the bobbin over and holding the tail, you can see I'm holding it. After it winds a little bit, I'm going to take a pair of scissors and cut this tail off that's in my hand as close to the bobbin as possible. Don't let it wrap back up inside, it will make a big mess. You can let the bobbin wind fold or stop it at any point. I'm gonna go ahead and stop it. I'm going to trim. I'm going to take the bobbin off, pull it back away from the bobbin winder and lift it off. Next, I'm going to thread the machine. And that's another thing I really like. It gives me pictures of what to thread and where to go. Pictures and numbers. So I'm going to slide it in, come around, go down, back up, catch it in this all important take up lever right up here and come back down. The needle threader is not hard on this machine. It's not quite as automated as some of the other baby lock needle threaders, but that's okay, it's easy. What I usually like to do is press my needle down and up button. It makes sure the needle is in the proper position. That is really important if you've turned the hand wheel on the side of the machine at all. Now I'm going to make sure I catch my thread at the top of the needle. Once I get my thread caught in this little guide at the top of the needle, I'm going to lower my presser foot to make it a little easier. That tightens up the tension discs, making it so the thread will not pull, pull out on you. 
And then we're going to put the thread behind this little metal guide. Push straight down. Do not use any force. Do not push off to the side at all. Straight down. And you might be able to see two little silver prongs came right around the needle. Once that happens, you're going to bring the thread around, catch it on the little hook. I have my hand all the way in the front. Now I can see that it's caught. And then I'm going to gently let go with both hands at the same time and use a pin or a the tip of your scissors to pull that back out. So let me show you how easy that was again. Behind this little silver piece, push straight down. The prongs come around the needle. The hook comes into the needle. We're catching it on the hook and then we're letting go with both hands. Again, there's a loop right here and you could pull it out with your fingers or a pair of scissors. To open the bobbin area, we're just going to push this over and place the bobbin in. The thread will come off counterclockwise, which means you're going to have the tail coming off on the left side. We're going to set the bobbin in, hold it with one finger, and then there's a little slot we pull the thread into, and that gets it into our tension. Then, as with most baby locks, we bring the thread around and pull off the tail. Easy, easy. I'm gonna go back to my straight stitch. I went back to the stitch. I'm gonna lower my presser foot. If you notice, it has a red light. When I lower it, it has a green light. Green means I'm good to go. I'm going to step on my foot pedal. And I have selected a triple stitch versus a plain straight stitch. So my machine is going forward and backward, forward and backward. I'd like to do just a plain straight stitch. So I'm gonna to switch to stitch number one and you can see it is just going forward right now. I have my reverse button, which will make the machine go backwards. And then this button right here, the tie off, when I hit it, when I hit that, it just stitches in place. When I'm all done, I can push my scissors button and it will cut the thread. When I raise the presser foot up, I can pull my fabric out and I am good to go. You can see we've stitched out a number of stitches already and I can show you how easy it is to switch stitches. I'm gonna take a peek at my lid up here where all my stitches are printed. Let's just say I want to stitch stitch 139. Rather than pushing through here 139 times, I am going to just hit here. It's going to go by tens. I get there real fast. And then I go to 139, I'm ready to roll. My light is still flashing on my screen, which is reminding me my presser foot's up. I'm going to lower it. I'm going to get a green light and I'm going to do my decorative stitch. One thing I like about the tie off button is when I'm done with a decorative stitch, if I try to reverse over top of it, it's not going to look pretty. It's not going to do what I want. So that tie off stitch, again, the needle just goes in place. So it's locking, securing the stitch, but it's not going back over it in a traditional reverse. I've cut my thread, I lift my foot up, and I just sewed this really adorable little satin stitch. Some other nice features about this machine, it has a free arm, which means my accessory tray will pull off all the way off. I can do hems on pants, I can do sleeves, whatever I need to do with a free arm. And this accessory tray has a lot of room in it that I can open the back for storage, keep your walking foot in there, some different feet, marking tools up in the front. We have a lot of room for storage. So that's super nice. What's really nice is if you pull this off, you can purchase an extension table with it, a nice clear plastic extension table to give you a lot of room. So there's a lot of possibilities with this machine. Most of the feet snap on and off. They pop on by pushing the little black button in the back. The foot falls off and you can replace it with a new one, line it up, lower your presser foot and it will snap on. But the free motion foot and the walking foot are ones you're going to have to use your screwdriver for. So again, it just pops off and then you can snap it back on. I am going to attach the free motion foot. So I'm loosening this screw a little bit. And now when I lift my presser foot up, it is not gonna be connected anymore because I loosened the screw that was holding it. I can pull that right off. 
And if you notice, you can push up higher on the presser foot lever and it comes up even higher to help you with changing your feet, pulling things off. Sometimes you need a little extra height. This foot right here is going to, this is going to go on right where we took the other foot off. Once it is on securely, we're gonna tighten that screw back up. And you want to do this with two hands because I've already seen my foot fell a little bit. I'm going to just push up. So it's up tight to that screw and tighten the screw. Very easy. Once it's on, you wanna lower your feed dogs, which are done by pulling the accessory tray off. And in the back of the machine, there's a little lever. Put the accessory tray back on or your extension table. What's really nice about the Allegro is that it comes with the single hole throat plate. If you look at this plate, it has the single hole right here versus the one that does the wide decorative stitches. That is really very nice for straight sewing and free motion quilting. I do recommend using that if you're gonna do free motion quilting for sure, but for today, I'm going to just leave the regular one on. When I free motion quilt, I wanna use a straight stitch. So I'm going to go back to stitch one. And then I'm going to lower my foot, but with any free motion foot, it doesn't go super tight. It lowers it enough to engage the tension, but it leaves it up so you can move your fabric around as you're stitching. You can change the speed if that's better for you. And then you just put your foot on the pedal and you move. It is a nice smooth machine. You, of course, your foot controls the speed, but I can't go any faster than this right now because I have the machine on a medium speed and that seems to work for me. When I'm done, you can cut your thread if you prefer or, or pull your fabric out if it's easier because you want to bury your thread tails. Either way works for you. On the side of the machine, we have a traditional thread cutter. So you can certainly do free motion quilting. So you've got a lot of room to free motion quilt. You've got 200 stitches for your decorative stitches, whatever you'd like to do. So as you can see, the Baby Lock Allegro is really a a great machine with a big opening, some of the nice features, all the different decorative stitches, and one of my favorites, the thread cutter. All really nice features. So if you enjoyed this video, please head over to our website to check out the machine more in detail at quiltersattic.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've got some other fun videos going over other things we do here at our shop. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.